and I'm Andy with the Deplorable General. Every week we bring you tactical tips and tricks, guns and gear review, and political commentary. I'm a military veteran and the president of Tactful Tactical. We are a firearms consulting company, security consulting, firearms training, that sort of thing, uh, out of the York, Pennsylvania area. We normally do our shows on Thursday night from 8 to 8.30, um, again out of York, Pennsylvania. And on uh, Channel 16, if you have uh, cable in our local area here. Um, but anyway, we, we talk about all kinds of stuff. We talk about situational awareness. We talk, like I said, we do tactical tips and tricks and stuff like that. We've reviewed specific firearms. Um, we've reviewed um, uh, specific calibers. We've talked about different battles. We've talked about things like deadly force and situational awareness. So we've uh, really covered a whole lot of different things and one of the things that we like to do is a uh, is gear reviews okay so in my mind again this is just me this is the way my brain works um, there are several different um, methodologies when it comes down to bags okay there are uh, bug out bags there are get home bags and then there are go bags okay uh, to me a bug out bag is something that you pack uh, for the purpose of leaving wherever you are and getting to a bug out location okay if you have to run on the quick uh, you pick up your bug out bag up and you take off and you have what you're going to need to get you to your bug out location okay to me uh, in my opinion and just the way that my brain thinks about this stuff is a, a go bag um, is going to be a lot smaller scale a go bag is something that I keep in my vehicle um, that is for say shorter distances and then a get home bag to me is going to be something like a three day assault pack style uh, that is going to be able to get you home if you're a little bit farther away. Those are kind of the three distinctions between the different packs or bags. And today I wanted to talk about what I have for a go bag. I think this is important. In my vehicle, I used to have my get home bag at all times. Uh, now, I had a super high speed tactical minivan that um, I had plenty of room in. And this bag fit in it fine and didn't take up a whole heck of a lot of space, so it worked for me. Uh, I liked the idea of having as much as I could possibly need in my vehicle at all times. It was great. Uh, that vehicle died on us and we got an Explorer. The Explorer doesn't have as much storage space so to keep the uh, get home bag in the back of the Explorer it takes up a whole lot more space and it really made a lot of that space unusable for when we had to put like groceries and things like that in it so I decided to go ahead and switch to my go bag. And this is just the name that I give these things you can call your bags whatever you want. I really don't care. This is just this is the way that my brain breaks these things down. Um, so this, what I'm going to talk to you today about is is the go bag. Now, here is the bag that I use for my go bag. Um, I am not exactly sure what brand it is. I have it on my Amazon. I will put links for all of this stuff in the description. Um, if it's something that you're interested in. This is a, a sling bag, I guess you could call it. As you can see, it's not very large. And uh, currently, I have the shoulder strap tucked into this little pocket right here. You can pull it out. It attaches here and then there are these little D-rings on either side depending on which side you want to sling your pack on. So, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I have in here. I'm going to start out with the very front pocket right here. Um, this is stuff that I find necessary and important based off of the area that I live. If you're looking at this and you have some suggestions or some things 
that are in here that you wouldn't have or uh, maybe some suggestions for things that you would add, feel free to leave a, a comment for me down in the comment section. Um, I do read and respond to all comments and I do appreciate any suggestions. So let's start out here. Um, a lot of this stuff now is stuff that I just kind of picked up along the way. Uh, this right here came in a Red Cross first aid kit. It's a little boo-boo kit. Um, some towelettes, some band-aids, um, some ibuprofens in there, but just a, a little quick access boo-boo kit. Then I have a Be Smart Get Prepared. It's a little minimalist uh, hiking first aid kit. Kind of a, a lot of the same stuff. Band-Aids. This is again more of a boo-boo kit. This is not a blowout kit by any stretch. Um, Talets, band-aids, some gauze, stuff like that. This is this is more so like a uh, something that you would carry hiking with you. I have a, uh, a tourniquet tucked in the front here, and there are some also some um, some foamy um, ear pro in there. In the front pocket, I also have a small Bic lighter. and some water purification tablets. Now, I like to keep my water purification tablets with my first aid. Um, the reason being is because usually they're small and it's easy to uh, for them to get lost in your pack if you don't have like a designated spot that they always are. So for me, with the purification tablets, I always put them wherever my first aid stuff is. Sometimes I have them in my IFAC, um, I have them in my first aid kit or whatever pocket that I have my first aid. That's where I keep the water purification tablets. Again, you can keep them where you want, but that's just the way that I remember where they are. Um, in the second pocket, um, I have dryer lint matches for fire starting. If you haven't used uh, dryer lint for fire starting, it works perfect. Um, I have a phone charging cable. I have a little screwdriver kit here. So this guy comes out of there. And then the little heads, they have, you know, a Phillips, a flathead, uh, a, like a, I don't know, an ice pick? I don't know, which, what else you use that for? Um, a couple of different size flatheads. So, just a little quick screwdriver kit. Um, I have a little uh, Ultrafire flashlight. Look, guys, um... I'm all about getting Surefire and a, uh, I have a, a Phoenix, but um, as far as cheap flashlights go, you cannot beat these things, okay? They go for like two, three bucks on Amazon at the, at the most, and they are incredible. They're really bright, they're durable, um, and for that price, you can buy like, I think you buy like 10 packs for like 25, 30 bucks. I definitely highly recommend these. I'm not going to spend the time to do an entire review video on these. Um, the the only thing that sucks about them is that they are coming from China and um, they often take a long time to get here. But I highly recommend these. These are perfect little flashlights to put in your pocket, um, to put in your kit. I mean, really, I highly, highly recommend these. They have um, they have different modes. So they have a, a very bright setting, a little bit dimmer, and then a strobe setting. Um, you know, it, great, great flashlights for under three bucks. Highly recommend them. Um, I also have a pretty large Columbia River knife and tool. Um, this is the Casper. Um, having knives in you, any of your kits 
are a really, really good idea. I mean, the, the uses for this stuff is infinite. Um, I, I carry multiple knives in all of my bags. Uh, we have a chem light. Um, now, for for uh, the reason why I have a chem light in here, um, we carry chem lights on our um, on our vests and in a lot of our kit for things like room clearing. Um, you can also use them to mark casualties with, um, to mark specific locations with. But in this particular bag, I carry it for two reasons. One would be an extra source of light. Um, and the other reason would be for signaling purposes. So um, you tie a little piece of paracord to it, uh, crack it, you spin it around, um, sort of uh, rip saw, and that creates a glowing circle basically and you can signal for help that way. Um, so that's why I carry that in there. Um, I carry a little, little uh, box of super glue. I have a couple of AAA batteries because some of the, the things that I have in here take AAAs. And I have a... Now these things are really, really important, folks. I would highly recommend that you get this and put them, again, in every single one of your kits. From your, um, from your vest to your bug out bag to your get home bag, whatever. Um, this... Again, I'll leave a link in the description for this. This is a lock pick set. You pop the little picks out of there. There's a handcuff key. Um, there's a rake. This thing can save your life. And I also recommend that you take some time and learn how to use it. It is not difficult to pick most locks. Most locks, especially padlocks, are there for more so for peace of mind than security. If you ask me, because they're not hard to defeat. And again, a couple bucks, besides their credit card, can't go wrong. Okay, there's really no reason not to have something like that in any piece of kit that you have. Um, highly recommend that. Like I said, it's, it's also really a good idea to, to learn how to use it on eBay and on Amazon. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link in the description for this as well. They have um, practice locks that are actually clear locks that you're able to actually see when the rakes are putting the pins uh, into place. And that's how a lock works. It has pins that are put into place. The key pushes the pins up into place. Um, you have tension on it and it basically then those uh, pins, once they're lined up, allow the cylinder to turn and the lock opens up for you. So um, a lock pick set is it, it, like I said, it could save your life. And again, it's not just for like breaking into places. Uh, one of the things that I've thought about a lot is um, if I had to get home and go through an area and um, again, this is without rule of law, this is not just like my car breaks down, um, but if you're going through an area, you find like a uh, storage facility where they have the you know the the doors the garage door style doors and usually they're padlocked well those padlocks almost all of them are really easy to defeat with just a little bit of practice and um, you could have shelter with with those um, with those units people put all kinds of stuff in there clothes um, vehicles sometimes sometimes weapons food I mean there's there's all kinds of stuff if you ever watch the show where they buy stuff at the um, at the those storage container uh, uh, auctions, uh, they they the, they have so much in those things. So just being able to find a facility like that and pop those locks could be the difference between life or death. So moving on to the main pocket, um, I have tourniquet. Um, I have a container, so this pot has a plastic cup, actually it has two plastic cups in it, 
So um, you can cook your food, boil your water into this. I like it, it's compact. Uh, this has holes in it for breathing and also pouring. Um, you know, for what it is, this is a really good, oh, the, the handle locks into place. Uh, this is a Stanley, again, link in the description. Uh, for a kit like this, this is a great option. It's small, it doesn't take up a lot of space, and um, there are a whole lot of uses to boil water. Um, you know, I showed you the uh, water purification tablets, but um, this gives you an opportunity to, to boil water and not use those. The, uh, those purification tablets, if you've ever drank water with those, they, they taste really nasty. And it, I'd rather drink something that doesn't taste good than die, obviously. Um, but if you can find clean water that, that you have the ability to boil, that's the way to go. Um, I have a bandana. Lots of uses for a bandana. You could do a makeshift tourniquet with it. Um, you can do wound dressings with it. Uh, it's, this is camouflage, so you could use it as a, a uh, something to camouflage yourself with. I have some 550 cord. This is about 25 feet of 550 cord. I have a compass in this main compartment. Now the one thing that I don't have in here that I should and would like to have, I just haven't been able to um, decide what I should use for this, is, is maps. Um, I have a couple of maps of the area, um, so that would be specific to the area that you're in obviously or that you're going to be, but uh, for this being my go bag this is kind of like a quick hey I break down uh, the nearest town for me is, is 10 or 12 miles so I break down in town or an EMP hits or whatever somebody steals my car and I have this um, it's something that I can get home within that same day and I don't really need maps because um, because I know my way home I know multiple routes and different ways to get home but with this I have a, an idea uh, the direction of the towns that are close to me so if I am out in town I can use a compass still to be able to get home but I do think that it's a good idea to have maps it just gives you a better idea of the layout of the land and when you're in a stressful situation you might know uh, clear as day right now exactly how to get home but you're in a stressful situation sometimes your brain doesn't work the way that it's supposed to so throw a compass in there it's either something like this you have a, a military lensatic compass um, or even the one of those little round compasses uh, they have on like wristbands or um, yeah, different things like that. So compass is a good thing to have. Okay, so I have a 10 round AR magazine with 10 rounds in it. Um, this is kind of just a backup. This is uh, this is not my primary. This is man if. If I have to fall back to this, stuff has really gotten bad, but I'd rather have 10 rounds and an AR mag in my go bag and, um, and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, this is kind of neat, Trailblazer Survival Kit. It's, uh, it's watertight, it's got, a, it's got a gasket inside of it, plastic kit here, it's got some instructions. Um, in it, it's got a, uh, let's see, it's got an accident evaluation report to kind of help you know where you're at and what to do. There's a, uh, a little uh, hand chainsaw, a whistle, a candle, a uh, ferro rod, some, uh, looks like there's a pencil, some needle thread buttons, and uh, a little razor blade, some cotton balls, uh, some wire to make snares and stuff like that. So this is just a nice little survival kit that if, um, you know, if you had to to survive for longer than you'd expected, this kind of gives you the tools to get you started, just to make things a little bit easier for you. Um, not a bad little kit. Again, there. 
they're not expensive uh, maybe like 10 bucks or something um, I think it's definitely worth having one of these um, I have one of these in my bag in both of my vehicles um, in my bug out bag in my get home bag and like for the price and for what you get in them it's just a nice little um, sealable container it's got this little hole here that you could put it on a lanyard if you needed to and throw it around your neck um, I don't know why you would but you could anyway um, that's definitely a, a nice little thing to have especially for something like this now um, this was a little cheap first aid kit I think it came from Dollar General but now it has a rubber band which has its own uses and inside of it I have a bunch of 9mm. I have no idea how many rounds are in it. I probably did when I put them in there. Um, it's more than a couple of magazines worth. Um, I have a napkin in there with it to stop it from rattling around and to just make any moisture that might slip into there. Hopefully that kind of mitigates that a little bit. Um, it is again serves the same purpose as the AR magazine. Now, um, I I will say I am a lot more likely to have a 9mm on me than I am to have an AR on me. Um, I do not very often, especially locally, carry an AR-15 with me around and about. I'm not knocking it. If you do, that's awesome. I just don't. Um, for me, I'm proficient with my handgun, um, you know, again, I know my area well, I know people that live in my area well, so if like things got real nasty and I needed a long gun, where most areas that I'm at, I'd be able to fall back to a location where I could get a long gun, um, but that's just not something that I carry around with me usually. Now, when I go on more long distance trips yeah absolutely when I'm when I'm gone for a couple of weeks um, I have an AR with me almost always depending on where we're going and the states and the laws and things like that so um, I am a lot more likely to have my nine millimeter on me or one of them or multiple than an AR and that's why I have more bullets and that's why I think that it's a good idea to carry extra ammunition wherever you are now I personally, when I uh, go out, I carry my uh, pistol and an extra magazine. So depending on what I'm carrying, uh, that is going to be anywhere between 24 and 36 rounds that I'm carrying on the, the gun and my extra magazine. And then I have a couple of extra magazines here. So again, if, if things just really got crazy, I'm not blowing my load and... and left with nothing um, so in that pocket I also have a uh, water filter straw this is a filter pen um, I guess that's the brand filter pen it's a cheap one but it works um, this one has a thousand liter uh, capacity so you can use it to drink a thousand liters um, it's nice because this actually screws on to the end of a water bottle uh, standard water bottle so you can fill your water bottle up in a creek screw this on the end of it and then use it to filter your water and in my vehicle I always carry a case of bottled water so that that could once I drink that up this makes up for the rest um, So I carry one of these emergency food ration bars. Okay, um, five year shelf life, but honestly they last a lot longer than that. I believe you get these at Walmart. Again, uh, I'll try to put a link in the description for you, but um, 2,400 calories, this is, this is enough to last one person for a day, give or take. A military age man uh, that's exerting a lot of energy uh, actually would probably need about 3200 calories but for most people 
this is going to help you get through a day's worth of getting home from wherever you are in town and whatnot. Um, they're, they're not bad. They're not awesome. They're kind of like a cookie. Um, it says five year shelf life, but these things are like sea rations, um, like the lifeboat rations, and they will easily last 20 or 30 years, maybe more than that. So, um, definitely a good thing to have in a quick get home bag. Um, and then at the, to, to go along the same vein, we have uh, some MRE components. Uh, let's see, we have a caramel apple ranger bar. We have some cheese spread, incredibly good. Um, and some wheat snack bread that feels like it's probably been reduced to crumbs. But um, this is, this for me is more of a morale thing. This is, maybe it takes you two days to get home. This is gonna put some food in your belly. It's gonna help you kind of pass the time to not really think about your situation uh, when you don't want to. Um, so that's why I have those in there. And they fit and it's, there's no reason not to have a little bit of extra um, if you can. So, let's see. Oh, uh, with that I have a MRE spoon. If you get MREs, this thing is gold. It's like a uh, plastic spoon times like five. I love it. And in the back little pocket, I have a, right in the rain, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it because of my chroma key here, but yeah, it looks like you can. Uh, right in the rain, notebook, and a pencil, and another pencil, and a pen for redundancy, and that's what's in there. Now, um, so that's what I have in my main pocket, okay? On the outside, um, I like this because it's got the elastic bands there. Uh, it's got some molly in the front, so if you, I have a, uh, an IFAC in my vehicle at all times, I can take that IFAC out of my vehicle and I could strap it to the front there. Or anything else that I might have in my vehicle that would have uh, molly compatibility. Um, over here is a little uh, paracord uh, survival kit. It's got some fishing wire in it, um, a ferro rod, I believe, and a couple other little odds and ends. I can't think really offhand what else is in there. Again, it's just a quick, nice little thing that it gives you a little bit of extra paracord um, and a, a couple of other just little materials that could be useful. Um, I believe that this circular part here is actually a, a knife blade that goes up in there. So it's a neat, just possibly useful little tool. Um, now, you wanna be cautious of this kind of stuff. In, in the military, when you're packing your stuff, having loose stuff hanging around isn't good because it makes a lot of noise, right? So um, it just depends on where you are, what you're doing, be conscious of that. Be conscious that things like this are going to make noise if you are running. Uh, or even if you're just walking. So if you are in an area where you don't want to make noise, take these off, no big deal. And then I have a, um, a butane lighter here that is attached on the side. It's a waterproof, windproof lighter. So I have a lot of redundancy in this little pack. I have my fire, my water, I have my food. Um, I don't have shelter because that's not what this kit is for. Um, I probably will put a disposable, uh, I have a couple of disposable ponchos. I'll probably throw one or two of those in here. I have a lot of stuff in my vehicle that I can augment this kit with as well. This is kind of just the, the foundation for what I would need to get home if I had to, you know, uh, and oh yeah, the last thing, sorry about that, I forgot about this. Uh, this knife on the side here, I love it. This thing is one of 
my favorite knives. This is for me is going to be a defensive a defensive knife. It's, it's razor sharp again Columbia River knife and tool. Um, this is the CK Dragon. It is just a fantastic knife. I've had this knife for years and it's more like a dagger but razor sharp. I mean there's a lot of different uses for this. I wouldn't necessarily use this as a bushcraft knife. It's it's not very thick as as you can see here. Um, I don't know how sturdy and strong the tip of this is. I've never used it for anything like prying or or really any kind of bushcraft tasks. Um, but this knife to me is an excellent defensive weapon um, and I keep it right on the outside for that reason. So like I said this covers the basics for me. This is the very minimum amount of gear that I'm going to need to go let's say under 40 miles or so. So um, this is this is what I'd be what I would need. Okay this gives me capability to do some basic first aid, a couple of tourniquets in case things get nasty, my water, my food, um, my container, my fire, uh, paracord, all, for all kinds of stuff. Uh, so this to me is the perfect close range, I, like I said, I call it a go bag. So um, links in the description for everything that I could find on Amazon. Uh, at the bottom of this video so check that out if you have any questions please go ahead and leave me a comment below uh, feel free to reach out to me on the tactful tactical Facebook page that's probably the fastest way to get a hold of me tactful tactical again I'll leave the link in the description for that um, and folks this stuff is important to start thinking about and start putting together if you haven't already if you are brand new to prepping or to like a preparedness mindset this is one of the best places for you to start. This channel, obviously, but but um, the get home bag, bug out bag, go bag, these bags are the perfect place for you to start because a lot of this stuff you could probably already find in your own home. If not, you can run to Walmart and it's usually not too expensive to put together something like this. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments in the description. Um, as always, I look forward to seeing you next time. Deplorable General, over and out.